Okay, before you say it, I know the last time I did one of these was almost half a year ago, and I'm a little bit late, uh, but it's my birthday this month, so you have to be nice to me. Starting this video, I don't think I even knew what I was doing. I had a few ideas rattling around, but no clear goal in sight. As a result, early on, I did a few things, which I thought I may do for the full episode, but then switched on them after a while. Anyway, uh, intro. I'm YouTuber, and this is video. I briefly expanded my beacon in the weirdest way possible with the iron I had gotten thus far before AFKing my creeper farm for some amount of time. I have no idea how long I paused my recording. My AFK platform diving board is still the best thing I've ever built, by the way. I had quite a lot of gunpowder, but still sugarcane was a bottleneck to my firework production. I crafted some of the quartz I had stockpiled, I assume just to save resources. While you can't turn quartz blocks back into quartz, you can only use unrefined quartz for a handful of things in the game. I need a deep slate for a build. Spoilers, but it's not the theme of the episode. I mined a bit of deep slate before realizing I was mining with silk touch and I need cobbled deep slate. Here I noticed I had dynamic lights on. Gross. After mining two shulkers, I decided to exit the cave, flying through in a horrifically unsafe manner. I would actually need a lot of deep slate, both cobbled and smooth, for a future project, but that won't be in this video. Or any of the next three videos in the series. While cleaning up some of the final shulkers and junk from the iron farm, I got to four and a half hearts returning to my portal. Smooth. Most of the contents of the shulkers were sandstone, which is fine. I crafted most of the deep slate into bricks and went to this hill where I had planned to build a little fortress. I started with a square of deep slate bricks before building up and making a ring up top, and beams going down. Though I actually made it a rectangle, which is not intended. I aligned this tertiary pylon at the back, and I had settled on a vaguely triangular shape for the fortress. I want to do it in the same sort of style as my desert house, which I refer to like it isn't 150 blocks away. Also, I built the third pylon wrong, which is dumb, and makes me stupid. Then my diagonal angle didn't connect correctly, so I had to rebuild the pylon anyway. I had to go to my iron farm for something, and it had barely produced anything, which is annoying, but I would eventually get it working. By cheating. Anyway, I villagered and then got back to building. After realigning the pylon, I built the foundation for a hall between the second and third pylon. I took the sand out of the ground to get it ready for building a floor, then built the other two hallways, which are much more simple. I also realized the first pylon was a rectangle. Is pylon the right word? I briefly considered putting in a fourth pylon jutting out from the diagonal wall, but I quickly realized that was dumb as shit. I even considered putting a pylon in the center of the diagonal wall, and that would definitely have been even dumber and even uglier. I got distracted by shiny objects in the vicinity, but realized pretty quickly I was off track and returned. I started building the walls for the fortress. They're not hard to build, but it will be hard deciding what to do with them. After building the inner walls, I needed deep slit for a thing, and when flying down to my base, I got to half health. I should be better at this. I've been playing hardcore Minecraft for like five years. That's longer than Philza. Don't think about it too hard. I should also say, I do have lore planned for this build, but it was really made after the fact. Basically, as like, if I can make this fit the lore, I won't have to tear it down. I will eventually do a whole video on the lore of this world and all of its builds. Uh, also, this happened. After repairing the creeper damage, I began framing the exterior wall, starting with the diagonal one, because that's the hardest. I checked back up on my iron farm, by the way. It's working. Yeah, that cheat fix doesn't happen until episode 7. I'm way ahead. With this iron, I still need a bit more for the full beacon. I decided to convert all of the minerals in my storage into blocks, and use them for the beacon, just temporarily. I needed 9 more blocks after that, and while I could have just waited a couple minutes and gone to the iron farm, I decided to mine. Which, in that time, the iron farm probably produced 9 blocks of iron. I then swam through lava to save cobblestone, because I'm unkillable. Anyway, after a bit of mining and shafting, I put my ore on to smelt and returned to building. I slightly restructured these alternating blocks on the inner walls and replaced the inner walls with cobbled deep slate lined with deep slate bricks. As long as I get a decent material for the outer wall, that should be good. As I built the stairs for one of the pylons, I realized I had definitely been out long enough for my iron to smelt, and it turns out it wasn't in my simulation distance, so it had been long enough, but it was just never smelting in the first place. Man, I hate the sugarcane farm, and I hate that I don't fix it until like the end of episode 5, which is like a 200 day long episode. After sleeping the night away, like in real life, I woke up and sprung right into action. I had thought long and hard and decided on orange and red for the concrete walls. Red for the corridor walls, and orange for the pylon walls. Plus yellow to complete the color scheme if I can fit it in anywhere. Those are, coincidentally, the colors of my persona. Okay, I just have to ask, why is the color of Minecraft red terracotta one of the most attractive colors on the planet? 
I actually lied. After filling in all of the red walls, I began mining white terracotta. That's the kind of terracotta that looks like my decrepit European skin. I built all of the pylon walls with it before realizing it's ugly and using orange. Though I would find a use for this white terracotta eventually. I mined up oring for a while before filling in the walls I hadn't made with white and seeing that it was so much better. I painted over the drywall and it was looking good. I'm not done yet, but from afar it looks okay. I did run out of food eventually, which necessitated that I visit the villages, where I realized I can sell my iron to the villagers for infinite free money. I had plenty of iron, enough to sell off and to replace all of the diamonds on the beacon. I also said fuck it and took some extra iron blocks for my villager materials to replace the gold. I don't have a ton of apples, and I should really stock up on those. At this point, I only had one villager that bought iron, and a bit of a goal of mine was to at least somewhat reliably be able to trade iron with the villagers. I needed wood for smithing tables, and I actually had to fly quite far into the mesa to get oak, though I do have jungle trees in the desert, so that was kind of pointless. I actually crafted sticks here. The stick market will soon be made redundant with the introduction of iron, which I make passively. I started working on the fortress again. I did forget about the deep slide at the base, so I need to get that. I also made a stone cutter, so now I can efficiently make stairs. Previously, the stairs in the fortress were all just bricks, so I made them real. Next, I decided to make the floor of the fort, and while terraforming, I noticed this side of the tower. It's not terrible, but it looks just a little bit like it's floating. After using basically a stack of bricks on the first side, I realized I may not actually have enough for it, which proved true after I ran out while beginning the final portion of flooring. I grabbed some deep slate bricks and slabs, which should be enough, as well as some cobbled deep slate walls, which should add some more variety if I use them well. After adding some highlights with the deep slate walls, I finished the floor. I had enough resources, though I did have to tap into those slabs. I tinkered with the stairs a little, and then I began working on the external wall-based stuff. Not actual walls, but using the wall blocks to resemble beams and ridges and stuff. Putting straight lines of walls along the pillars was okay, but it still looked a little plain, so I decided to put these extra blocks in the middle. I tried putting deep slight walls on the ridges on this wall before realizing that would look dumb as shit. I also tried making these walls appear like supports for the stairs, but that also looked terrible. Walls on top of the turrets, though, that looks pretty evil. So the fortress is basically done now, and that's obviously not the entire episode, but it's in the thumbnail because what I'm actually doing in this episode would make a terrible thumbnail. So now I'm building a lookout tower in addition to the fortress, and again, I promise the entire episode isn't just building, but uh, I mainly built it to get rid of the excess white terracotta in my possession, and I worry that particularly with the color of the terracotta, the building will look a little bit phallic, but I'll try to use walls in a deep slate brick frame to prevent that. So I did this build to use up my white terracotta, but I realized after building the first of the terracotta walls that I might need to mine more, though fortunately I had an extra stack in my chests. I then finished the terracotta walls and built the floor. It's 3x3, three three, so it's not a huge task. And I built the spiral staircase and realized I hadn't actually built on the sides of the deep slate walls. I began doing so, but realized that I did not have enough deep slate wall, so I had to go up and mine more of the treacherous slate of the deep. I know that my cave flight scares you, but it doesn't scare me, and I'm the only one that matters. After installing the walls, this happened, which was not at all a close call, but it was hilarious. I built support beams out of the deep slate walls, which I now had an excess of, and began building the roof. It's just deep slate, I'm not going fancy or as ugly as the roof of my house. After finishing the roof, I wasn't happy with it. I felt it either needed to be larger or appear more continuous with the main build. Also, it did not give a ton of room for activities. I tried putting a rim of slabs on it, and that looked... okay, I guess? Also, I moved this wall out for space. I brilliantly saw that there was walls here, and decided to put more walls there. Beautiful. I crafted some more fireworks, because I realized I left my fireworks shulker by the iron farm as I ran out. Anyway, I looked at it from afar, and man, it looks fine. I'm so sick of these stupid fortress things. I filled in creeper holes for a minute, and after fucking around for like 10 minutes, I tore down the beacon. It's time to do this thing this episode is actually about. I needed stone first, so I set up some haste mining in the cave. I mined, nothing interesting happened, and I crafted it into stone bricks, building a little seawall in the river. It was right at this point where the village goes across the river, though, so actually it would be two separate rivers, as the village entirely cuts it off. And it just so happens to restart on the other side of this village dirt pile, which separates the river. In case it wasn't obvious, I'm building a dam, one which will mark the border of my next project, and this dam would require that I tear down everything on this side of the village. I did sort of realize my dam concept was flawed, and I'd have to build the dam after I removed the land, which divided the river, which was quite a lot of land. 
Only once I began removing the paths which intersected around the village division did I realize how much land I would be removing. The reason I had to rethink the dam before was that the first wall of the dam would have been like 15 blocks wide, but instead with this revised dam it would have been 5 blocks wide. After removing the top layer from the area I intended to excavate, I placed the top layer of the dam, just a strip of stone bricks, and I then began clearing out the area directly under it so I could build the full dam. I intended to dig underneath it until I hit stone, but I realized it would be much smarter to dig the final shape of the river either side of it, than just build it to the bottom of that. The dam on its own provided a lot of sand, which could be crucial for the rest of this project, but I didn't bother collecting it. There was quite a lot of stone I had to remove, but it wasn't quite enough for me to bring over the haste beacon. I crafted some iron bars to build railings around the dam, which should keep the villagers from falling down onto the drained side of the dam. Oops, I just said what the project is. So the dam is actually functional, and functionally it will do what I need it to, but it will still need some tweaks later. So it's sponge time! It took me a weirdly long time to find an ocean monument in the ocean next to me, which isn't that big and has like four of the things. I did finally find a monument after about six minutes, which doesn't sound that long, but if you played it out, you would realize that's a pitifully long time to take when I'm so close to several monuments. The hard part of raiding ocean monuments isn't really getting attacked. Guardians give you plenty of warning time, and Elder Guardians aren't a big problem, as long as you can find them. Uh, but I couldn't because I idiotically decided to swim through the monument the old-fashioned way. Normally I just poke holes in all three of the preset spawn points for the guardians, and then I kill them, and then wait for the mining fatigue to go away, then dig through the walls until I find sponge rooms. While searching, I saw that there are at least two sponge rooms in the monument though, so that's good to know. After waiting out my mining fatigue, I retrieved 38 sponge from the room, and then I realized the second sponge room was right next to it. While searching for another potential sponge room, I noticed another common problem I get, which is that like half of my hits on guardians don't register. It's possible that because, like, they're hitting me with the thorns, for some reason it gives them iframes, but I don't see why it would give any more than a regular attack. After dispatching the guardians, I hadn't even gotten mining fatigue yet, and I began the search. This monument yielded two sponge rooms, and after looting those, I had just over two stacks of sponges, which would be enough to get me started, but for serious draining projects, I like to have at least four or five stacks. While returning, I realized I was going in the wrong direction, and figured it would be quicker to go to the iron farm. Also, I need to check my iron production anyway. It was nice, I played for a couple hours since I last checked, so this is a pretty normal production rate. To dry out my sponge, I simply decided to place it all down in my nether tunnels, and then mine it up with a hoe. For a minute I labored under the delusion that I could accomplish any part of the draining without blocking off sections of the water, but that would prove a Sisyphean task, so I instead chose to use netherrack to section stuff off. I'll use sand a little bit later once I'm out of the river and more into the lake. I cleared this whole area, which was mostly one block deep, and I used far too much sponge to do it. I'm not sure why I was so reluctant to just do normal draining with sand and nether warp blocks, or skulk, or basically anything that can be mined with a hoe. It's not like I didn't know how. If you'd recall my 300 days video, I drained using that method, and Jesus Christ, why did I sound like that? For some reason, instead of hoeable blocks, I started using these weird strips of netherrack, which are terrible for actually draining anything. I do eventually begin draining the right way, but it's gonna be a bit. Frankly, I'm just as disinterested in commentating this stupid draining style as you are in watching it, so I'm gonna skip ahead just a little. I'm also doing this because there's no audio for the next hour and a half of my recording. After around half an hour of draining, I started mining sand, which I will eventually use correctly, but here it was still inconvenient because the water was already fucked from the netherrack. After finishing draining the area I had already ruined, I flew back to my base to craft two observers and a piston. You may already know what I'm doing, and yes, I know it's horrifically inefficient. I will start using the better method later, but not until I'm like halfway done with the draining. After that, I realized both of my picks and my elytra were getting low, and my shovel was on its last leg, so I went over to replenish them at my enderman farm. After returning, I inefficiently laid out five more walls, which actually got me around halfway to the lake ocean thing. At this point, I had converted to sand, but not yet to the proper method of bridging using sponges and hullable blocks, so I was just haphazardly placing them in each five block sand strip. Draining the water between the walls I had just put up was a surprisingly easy task, but I also kind of realized I would need more sand for the later portions of the draining. I also also finally tore down this netherrack wall. Later, the audio is back and I'm filling in the top of this underwater ravine with sandstone. It's incredibly boring. After that, I did finally start placing sand walls again. 
I know I'm also kicking myself watching this because there is a much better method I should absolutely be using here. I drained this tiny little bit of water before beginning the next wall. After finishing that one, I was fucking around and blew two holes in the shore. I wasn't holding a totem here, so it could have been dangerous, but honestly, even two creepers would need to be dealing pretty much their max possible damage to kill me with my chest plate on, which would be unlikely. The worst part was that I had to waste time and sand filling in the holes. A lot of the stuff I do in this video is very repetitive, and the sand is no exception. I was about ready to drain these next few rows, but all of my sponges were wet. At no point in this video do I build a portal closer to the village or do anything to make drying sponges any easier, so you'll have to live with my inefficiency. Speaking of inefficiency, I began draining the next few rows, but after like three they were getting bigger, and I really started struggling with my stupid method of placing the sponges. I had to dry my sponges, so I messed around in the village for a while, placed them in the nether, and got attacked by a piglin. Not wearing a totem and with no sword in my hotbar, had I been more absent-minded, that may have been a bad situation. I proceeded to expend all of my sponges on just two rows. I would say that I either need more sponges or more efficient training, but I definitely need both. I finished the last row of water before tearing down this bit of netherrack and beginning to take down the sand walls. Add sand to the list of things I need more of, by the way. Number one is money, forever and always. This was around the time my motivation for this project started to dip, and it's kind of funny, like here I play sand walls for 10 minutes before deciding I really didn't want to do this and leaving the game. There was this cave adjacent to the lake that was still flooded, and I started draining it ultra inefficient style, before realizing it's way bigger than I thought and decided to just block it off. I then went to this little patch of water and connected it to the wider lake which joins in with the mangrove forest, making it sort of like a reverse peninsula, and returning to the sand placing. After that, I finally made the wise decision to use the much more efficient method of bridge draining, as I'm calling it. I know you can build like flying machines to drain large amounts of water, but I don't fucking care. After getting most but not all of the needed fungus, I started killing wither skeletons for fun and didn't get anything. In the future, I will get many a beacon from this fortress though, so I can't be too mad. After getting the remaining blocks, I restocked on fireworks from my sugarcane farm, which wasn't even fully grown. It took me a minute to get the hang of it, but the bridges were faster, and they'll definitely be easier to clean up. And also noticed I had a sand wall I didn't even finish placing. So before collecting stuff, I checked, and I have enough sand to finish it, but I realized I probably won't even have enough sand to build two walls at the thickest point, even with my full sand supply. After collecting up all of my draining supplies, I was low on food, so I sold the last of my sticks, grabbed some iron, and began leveling some of these toolsmiths. Though I used quite a bit of the emeralds I got just leveling up other toolsmiths, so I had less than a stack of emeralds after I sold out all of them and spent most of my iron. In the end, I got like two stacks of golden carrots, so I still really need to upgrade my villager situation and wait for more iron to pile up. Basically this whole time I've been short on sponge, so after this I decided to go searching for more ocean monuments. I had nearly lost hope for this monument, but did at least find one. I had mining fatigue, however, so I had to hole up and do other stuff for a couple of minutes while I waited it out. After that ran out, I demolished all of the sponges, harvested the gold in the big room, and figured there was probably only one sponge room, so I left. I found this really cool hilly jungle, and I kind of want to build something here, but I don't have time today. Maybe someday. After that, I got a little distracted and started exploring the deep dark. I failed to find an ancient city and triggered a shrieker before leaving, but I still had fun. This deep dark went strangely high up, actually. I didn't check the coordinates, but that shit has got to go up to, like, Y40. Here I started flying in a very enclosed cave and got to, like, half health. This is the type of dumb shit you can't do without fearing for your life if you don't have a totem, and I think this is their best application. I dove down into another cave, and it didn't have an ancient city, but it did have another mineshaft, which I searched in a little, before finding three creepers on this one catwalk, which caused me to realize this was a bad idea. I had some trouble getting out of this cave, and even had to dig out for like the last 50 blocks. I started in a forest and dug out through a grove, which made me realize that there could actually be an ancient city down there, but right by it I found this mountain, which is just perfect ancient city material. Sorry about the audio being weird and sort of cutting in and out for this bit of the video. Anyway, that mountain did not have an ancient city under it somehow. This cave was technically in the grove biome, so I checked it, and of course, it was dry. Here I finally slept because the rain is killing my bitrate. I started this as a trip for sponge, and believe it or not, I actually did get some of that from this frozen ocean monument. I had the last Elder Guardian in my crosshairs when I got five minutes of mining fatigue. I flew over to a small island here and planned to get some iron, craft a bucket, and milk a cow to get rid of mining fatigue. I gave up and began mining my ender chest, and my mining fatigue ran out before I could even finish breaking it. I looted the one sponge room, and a couple thousand blocks away, I found another monument. I got mining fatigue, killing the second guardian, and when I went to wait out the mining fatigue, I slept and couldn't pick up my bed. Again, the same shit. I looted one sponge room after I'd waited long enough and left. 
After my mining fatigue ran out though, I actually crafted a bucket and filled it with milk for the next time I need to cure my mining fatigue. This day would come quite quickly as I found another monument in the same ocean where I used the milk to cure my ailment. After looting the, say it with me, one sponge room, before I could even refill on milk, I found another monument. This time I killed every guardian before they even gave me mining fatigue, and you know it baby, one sponge room. Next one I was not so lucky, and here for a second I was at two and a half hearts just from the guardians. That's closer than I like to cut it even with a totem. I flew to some nearby land to clear my mining fatigue and to get a bucket for the road, and after that I flew back to the monument and found something crazy. Two whole sponge rooms. This is unprecedented. After that I flew home, having collected around three and a half stacks of sponge. This was way closer to home than I thought though, so it only took a few minutes. I now have a proper supply of 360 sponges, but I realized I'll need more red wart blocks. Before that though, I went to convert all of the iron in my iron farm into blocks. The chests were pretty much full. And yeah, I will eventually add more storage, but I've got better things to do. I took some iron and sold some of it to my toolsmiths before stashing away the rest of it. Anyway, I grabbed some iron bars and stone bricks and built this little mini dam here. Luckily, it was much easier than the dam near the village, and I got it done in like five minutes. In the nether, I dried out my sponges, which will be a bit more challenging now, but worst case scenario, I can make a room to fill with sponges for drying. After this, I grabbed four more stacks of warp blocks from the Crimson Forest and was about to begin draining when I realized I should probably place more sand walls. After placing a handful of them, I started fixing the water on the flooded side of the dam. It's such a dumb move to convert sand to sandstone, but I believe I converted eight stacks of it today. I also started bridge draining, and genuinely, I think if I stuck with doing the random sponge placement, this project would have taken like a month. But I guess this video still took six with how long I took to write it. Yes, I began this video in March. Another good thing about this method of draining is that you can get muscle memory for it and basically just zone out while you do it. I did do a little primitive draining here, but it probably would have been harder to drain with bridges. I had to drain a bit of this cave, which should be small enough that I can just drain it instead of blocking it off from the surface. I had some troubles figuring out exactly how to collect the sponges, but I quickly landed on this method where you go under the bridge you're trying to mine, break it from below, and afterwards you go and collect anything that fell on the ground. This is why I should be more careful to cover up any little holes or caves before I start draining, or at least before I start collecting my stuff. I started breaking sand. I could use torches for this, which is slightly slower, but forces me to be more careful about each block, which will slightly better preserve the riverbed. After collecting my sand, I sold my iron and bought more golden carrots, and my shovel was running low on durability, so I used some of the villager XP to mend it, and got to around two-thirds durability. I also threw some bread at the villagers and organized a few chests in the area. After all of that, I had around three stacks of golden carrots, which means I can stop selling them for a bit. I flew around for a little while and crafted a few deep slate walls. I considered adding some more walls to the castle on the hill, but after deciding there was no way I could do that which wouldn't be hideous, I decided to place walls on top of all of the high blocks, but quickly realized because the walls here are kind of fucked, I couldn't make that look good either. After that, I spent like 30 minutes building this piece of shit shack out of deep slit and sandstone and terracotta, and I leveled up some of my newly created toolsmiths. Really though, I need more farmers and some more proper homes and workplaces for these villagers. I didn't chant another elytra after this, but really I plan to get at least 8 more on breaking 3 and mending elytra. By the way, the singular of elytra is elytron. It's not pronounced elytra or elytra, it's a real word which refers to the outer rings of a bug, and the plural is pronounced elytra. And the word for multiple sets of elytra is still elytra. And it's definitely elytra, but I'm still saying elytra. Next up, I was back to placing sand, and now I'm actually draining the ocean part of the lake. For some reason, around this part of the video, a lot of my recordings were like an hour or less. I suppose I just didn't have the motivation to do huge recordings. I mean, for context, episode 1 of this series was 12 recordings, episode 2 was 9, and this episode is 19. This 50 minute recording, however, was significant because I started placing sand underwater by hand. I wasn't yet using the proper method, but this was a clear step in the right direction. After a bit, I did start using the proper fastest method by rebinding right click to another key, in this case R, and just holding it down. If I had to guess, this is around 10 times the speed of the observer th clock thing. I believe you can make a faster observer clock than the one I've been using, but it's a slightly more complicated contraption and probably still slower than this. 
There are a few problems, mainly that if you hit another key while holding R, it just goes to the normal speed holding right click. Also, if there's any seagrass or fish in your way, it messes you up. I would not be able to enjoy my newly improved mining speed for long, however, because I had run out of sand, so I spent a minute preparing some insta-mineable diamond shovels and a few shulker boxes to fill with sand, before upgrading one shovel to another right and finding a bit of land pretty far from anywhere where I'd want to build anything, and spending about an hour depleting this land of all of its resources. At the end of it, I had nine shulker boxes completely full of sand. Hopefully this will be enough for the rest of the project. Back in the lake, I placed all 10 shulkers of sand. Yeah, I can't believe I ever considered doing all of the sand walls that slow. While it's much faster, the sand placing is still just as boring. So I do realize I could technically just do any block that's easy to get in a very large amount, like dirt or netherrack, but I'll need sand for the next project I want to do in episode 4, so I can start stockpiling some now. And I believe mining a falling block with an efficiency 5 shovel is faster for taking down a wall like this than mining dirt with a max shovel, or mining netherrack with a max pick, because it just falls right in front of you anyway. Drowning is kind of a serious risk here. There were a few points today where I got below half health because I totally zoned out placing sand. That's really the biggest reason why, at least in hardcore, I can totally understand going for a slower, safer method of placing sand. I had 60 dry sponges, but I figured I'd just dry off the rest instead of waiting to run out of them. And after that, I tried a slightly different method in which you swim backwards and place the sponges and warp blocks as you move, but that method sucks, so I went back to what I was doing before. I then got on my grind set, only being interrupted when I would occasionally place the bridge blocks wrong or have to drain a cave. To be honest, even this many sponges was barely enough at this stage. I would used almost all of them, just draining two rows. Draining and breaking the bridges at night is such a bad idea, any creeper could drop down from up top or one could spawn on the bridge and there goes a totem. Fortunately, I never popped a totem doing any of this, but I absolutely could have. I restocked on fireworks after clearing one row, then cleared the second, and began digging out a room next to my nether portal where I could place down all of my sponges without just placing them in a line in my tunnels and worrying about losing them. It's 12 by 12 by 4, so I will have to fill up most of the room to get them all down. I was placing them entirely randomly, but in the future I will be going for placing them with actual max efficiency. I used up all of my sponges in record time, and returning, I placed them in one solid rectangle. Like, th this shape is to a rectangle as a cube is to a square, so I, I think that's just a cube. After some more draining, I collected my sugar cane. I'll need to get in a proper AFK session sometime to stock up on gunpowder because the fireworks situation is starting to get dire. After that, I went to the end to repair my things, mainly shovels and my hoe. Back at home, I tore down a sand wall. Even though I haven't drained all the existing rows, I'm building more. Here I noticed that this row is 6 wide, so I made the wall double wide, taking up the extra block so I could drain it effectively. I also tore down all of the drained walls. After building a double wide wall, I actually had something fun to do. I wanted to take this huge cave with the haste beacon and cover it in sandstone so my villagers don't fall down it. Not to mention it's a bit of an eyesore against the sandy environment. This is some very basic terraforming, but I'm not very good at terraforming, so it was still quite a challenge. Also, most if not all of the sandstone is actually harvested from sandstone level in the desert, rather than doing the incredibly inefficient method of converting regular sand into sandstone. Covering the hole in sandstone took around 25 minutes. There's still a very visible crater here which I might do something with, but as is, I think it passes for natural generation. I then crafted some extra composters. I'm looking for another villager that can sell me golden carrots. One of the villagers here sold me blindness, suspicious stew, which is good if I ever want to do how did we get here. I then flew over to a village about a thousand blocks away, but still on the desert, and stole all of their beds. I had basically spent the next hour working on villager stuff. I placed those beds, then started building them homes, all roughly matching the style of the naturally generated villages, but with at least two beds. I also renovated all of the naturally generated villager houses on this side of the dam and put two beds in each. After that, I tore down some of the houses across the dam. They're bedless and don't get used, but I will keep a few intact in memoriam of the homes I've destroyed. I got back to building homes after that. I might not do it in this video, but I hope to eventually house every villager in town. Next to the first home I built, I started building a tower. I hope for this to house one villager on each floor, two if I can fit it, and I will have four floors. Maybe even some subterranean housing if I'm so inclined. Building the thing was easy. I initially wanted to do stairs, but remembered villagers can climb ladders. This also allows me to cram two villagers into one floor. For some reason I decided against this though and just chose to use stairs anyway, which do match the natural tower and desert villages, but also take up way more space. The tower ended up being a little ugly, but I don't think it's too far behind the official desert villages and aesthetics. I put some green windows in the tower and converted this house into a four bed. After that, I thought I would be done with the houses, at least for now, with only like five villagers still homeless, 
but a creeper did sneak up on me and kill one of my master fletchers, so that's now four. With that, I decided I could just build another house and cram four beds into it, which should leave all of my people housed. Though really, I don't have a count of exactly how many villagers and how many beds I have, so I'll need to wait for them to all sleep and then count them up if I want to know exactly how many beds they need. I quickly threw down another two-bed house next to the tower, and that should definitely be enough for each villager to have somewhere to sleep. But I do still intend to add one or two buildings in which all of the village's workstations will be so I can easily trade with everyone from the one building. And probably more housing if I ever need more villagers. I must have missed a recording though because at the start of the next one I had built that communal workplace and put all of the workstations in it. I crafted some composters, both providing stations for my existing farmers and converting some new ones. I then added doors to the building and threw in a few more smithing tables. Now I'm finally back to draining. It's not exactly riveting content, but it's the main project of this video, so I should probably work toward finishing it. I drained two rows before ending my recording. We're getting close to the end now, even though I still have like half of the lake to drain. The next day I came back and cleared out the iron farm. It's packed. After clearing, I decided to make a long overdue storage upgrade for the iron farm. I made the staircase go deeper and pulled it back to make space for the new chests, and it can now fill up to 15 double chests with iron, which is more than I'll need for like any project ever, so I can probably call it there. Back at home, I took down some more sand walls and placed another in like two minutes because I can do them that fast. I built more walls and got down to three hearts while zoned out placing sand. I only noticed because I had depleted all of the sand in my inventory and needed to go and get more, by the way. The first part of the next wall was plagued with seagrass, but I powered through it and continued grinding. I got to half health, was attacked by a pufferfish, and ran out of sand, needing just like a few more stacks to finish the last sand wall, like of the whole build. I began my draining bridge teardown procedure, one row after another, then dried out my sponges by filling Malodiel's crazy house of sponge with two big bricks of sponge. I dried out the last bits of water I didn't get before attempting to drain this area the stupid way, which was terrible and never going to work, so I did a sort of cross between the sponge spam and bridge draining. I got to four hearts trying to get this lost bridge block, then three and a half right after. I tore down my double wide sand wall and the one right after it before fucking around and killing mobs, luckily avoiding creating any new creeper holes. There was some tricky terrain here which complicated the wall destruction, but it was nothing I couldn't handle. At this point I had 10 rows left and began draining the first before drying out my sponges. After that I finally decided to move my sugarcane. I placed it on the wet side of the village dam and returned to draining. With 7 rows to go I began my last play session, it's 3.5 hours so strap in. There's this illegal sugarcane in some of the areas I've drained. It's not really hard to get intentionally though. Just place sugarcane next to water, drain the water, and the sugarcane stays until it's updated. After that, I grabbed two buckets to fill with milk. I was hoping to find some more sponge, but also while I'm at it, I could look at some monuments for a hypothetical project that I might do in the future, maybe. It was mostly in areas I had already explored, and I returned to my base with no sponge. I took a minute to restock before exploring w another area of the ocean. I checked the area around this ocean monument, which was not fit for a sand drop, or really any sort of monument project, but I got mining fatigue and had to milk up right as I flew away. I returned to the monument to grab the sponge and kill the guardians, and this time I got away with no fatigue. I found an ocean monument just a few hundred blocks from the opening of the village river, and apparently while I had killed the elder guardians, I had not collected the gold and I missed a sponge room. At the base I unmoistened my sponges, and returning to the lake I hit the ground a little hard and landed at three hearts. I reorganized my shulkers and ender chest before returning to the big drain. To attempt to make interesting commentary over draining would be a fool's errand, and I'm not a fool, so I'll be going through this pretty fast. I'm down to five rows, and now each row is getting shorter. I tried my sponges, and after knocking out another row, I covered up this little flooded cave near the lake with sandstone. On the antepenultimate row, I ran out of sponge in the middle of draining and had to mine my draining bridge while treading water. After drying my sponges, I went to mend my things in the end, and after that, I respawned at my iron farm and took the opportunity to clear out the roses. Finishing that row that I ran out of sponges on, I got fucked up by some pufferfish. I absolutely carved through the second to last row, and on the final row, I just did some sponge spam to clear it out, and found one cave which would take me about as long as the rest of the project to clear, so I blocked it off and drained the very last of the water. For the last time, I tore down my previous draining bridges and covered a few nearby holes and caves before tearing down my sand walls. Uh, by the way, I did change my Minecraft skin around this time, uh, but it was ugly and looked kind of like Hitler. I did change it, but man, it was not good. I returned to the end to mend my tools after taking down around half of the sand walls. There were a handful of caves and holes I had to cover up, but shortly after, I was right back to taking down walls. I then finished mining up all of the sand, and now I'm done. 
I know this video was a little shorter than the other two videos in this series, but I do have big plans for the next episode. It involves all of the leftover sand from this project, so I'll like, pin the comment of whoever can guess what that is first. It's not hard to figure out, but yeah, that's the end of the video. Bye.